In this video, we're going to be delving into theme styles inside Bricks Builder. What exactly are theme styles? How do you use them? How do you set them up? And what's the benefit? And maybe some of the shortcomings of them. In its simplest form, theme styles are basically a collection of settings that are set up as the defaults for every single page, template, section that you create inside your design in Bricks. So for example, you may want to set up the custom spacing for your containers, for your sections, for your blocks, your button styles. All those kinds of things can be set up inside your theme styles. Now you can expand them in a lot of different ways, and I will touch upon some of those later in the video, but let's get stuck into the basics and see how we create our first theme style and set up some basic settings. So to get the theme styles in Bricks is very simple. You simply open up a page, a template, doesn't matter what it is, just a Bricks-based file. So for this example, let's come into Bricks and into my templates. I'm going to open up just one of my templates. For example, this post archive template, we'll edit this with bricks. You can, of course, start with a completely blank file. It doesn't matter. So this is what we're going to use. Now, if we come over to the top left hand side and you've got this cog icon, if we click on this, that will open up all the various different settings that we have. Now, if you were using prior to 2.0, there's going to be some extra features inside you. We don't worry about those. What we want is theme styles, which is applicable on both versions. So inside here, we don't actually have any theme style selected. If you've created a theme style or more than one theme style, they'll be available inside this drop down list. You can see I've got this default style. Let's create a new one. Let's name this something simple like test theme style. I will click the little save icon to create it. And we've now created our theme style. So you'll now notice that we've got uh, several different options here. First of all, we have the conditions, and this says where and when this particular theme style is going to be used. So you could easily set up multiple theme styles. For example, you may have a normal website. You have a theme style set up for that. You may have a custom user dashboard on the front end of the website that you want to style differently. You could create a theme style for that. The beauty of this then is you could easily export and import these theme styles into new projects and have a starting point for all of your admin sections that you create on the front end of your website. Lots of different use cases for this. So once you've done that, let's click on the add condition and choose where we want this to be used. Drop the list down, you can see we've got a range of different options here. We're going to choose entire website for this example, but you can see you can set up different theme styles for different parts of your site and then use these conditions to apply it. Let's say entire website for this example. You've also got exclude, so you could easily exclude certain sections of your site, front page, for example, archives, those kinds of things, and you can just apply these combinations. And you can easily add extra conditions inside just so you can get very granular on where and when any theme style is going to be used. Let's keep it super simple, though. So we've set up where this is going to be used. Next, we've got a couple of options we want to take a look at. Some of these not so important, some of them very important. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to come into the general. We're going to leave the style sheets for now. We're going to come into general, and we can set up some options inside you. So the site layout, for example, you can see we've got basic things like boxed and wide. You can set a site background. You can control how your light box is going to look, the size of it, and so on. So pretty basic settings inside you, but you can easily configure the basics here. Let's leave that as it is and close it down. Next, you've got your colors. Open this up and you can see we've got a range of different colors from primary, secondary, light, dark, and so on. You can map these out then to any colors that you've got. So if we click on this, you can see I've got a color palette set up here. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but I can set my primary color up here. Now I can come into my secondary color, and I can come down and say, there's my secondary color. A light color, for example, we can come down and say we want to use light. Come down again, say we want to use dark and carry on doing this as we need to. So these now will be global colors. Anywhere we reference the primary, secondary, and so on, we'll have those colors applied. And we can use these for things like our buttons and all those kinds of good things and headings and body text and things like that. And then if we change them in this one location, anywhere that references these primary, secondary colors and so on will change accordingly. We'll leave the rest of those colors as they are. Come into your links, for example, inside here, you can set up and customize your links. So things like the typography, the background, and so on. Same things for borders, we can set up padding and so on, any transitions that we want to apply, those kinds of cool things. Again, let's just minimize this. So probably what you're going to do most of your work in and set most of the things up is going to be inside the elements panel. And inside here, 
All of the different elements we've got inside Bricks are available to set up those basic default values. They can be overridden on an instance basis, but consider this to be the template for how things are going to look on your actual site. So you've got things like your sections, your containers, your blocks, your divs, and so on. So for example, let's open up the container option. Inside here, you can see we've got all the normal things we would expect. So direction, whether it's flex, CSS grid, things like that, the size of it, those kinds of good things. And as you can see, we can easily change things inside you. So let's say that we wanted to have a max width of something like 800 pixels. Once I do that now, every new container that we put into our design, including any existing containers, will now pick up that max width value. You can see that's overriding this value at the top, the width, because we set a maximum. You could then get rid of this and you can set a minimum width, a column gap, a row gap, so we set these up at the beginning. And the beauty of this is then when we insert a container into a design, all these things are done every single time. We don't have to apply these time and time again or copy things over between one section or one container and another container, those kinds of things. So this just makes designing things with a starting point quick and easy. Same thing goes if we come down to things like our buttons. If we open this up, you can see we've got a bunch of different button types. We've got our default, which is kind of a catch-all. We've got our primary, secondary, light, dark, and so on. So now we could easily customize how these are going to look. So for example, let's insert a button. So let's add that button in. So now we've got a plain old button sitting at the top of our screen. Now, you can see this is set to primary. If we change this over to secondary, for example, you can see that picks up the secondary color we applied. Same thing goes if we go for light, dark, and so on. So those options are set up. So let's go back to our primary, for example. Now let's go back into our theme styles, our elements, and come down until we get to our button again. Let's come into our primary. Let's just change that background color. Let's just choose something completely different, like success. Now that picks that up. Come into our typography, change the font size inside you. It says like 1.8 rem. Set our color if we want to. So you can say we'll set it to be this dark blue color. Set your font family. You can set your font weight. So let's make this much bolder. Let's say something like 900. And let's say that we want this to be italic. And we want to make sure that this is all in uppercase. And there we go. So we now applied those to the buttons. Every time we now insert a button and we set it to be a primary in the style, it will pick this up. And any button that's already created and added to our site that uses that primary as its style will now have that change based upon what we've set inside you. Like I said, these are the global catch-alls. So this is basically how you would set things up. And that's okay. It works okay out of the box, but there's a much more efficient way of working. You'll notice if we come into something like, for example, the typography, we get this little variable symbol. So we can click on this, and then any variables that we've created that apply to our overall site, if you want to know a bit more about variables, check out this video. That's going to go into detail about how you use it. But a variable is basically one kind of source of truth that we can reference and use anywhere. Now, I use a framework called Core Framework but you can easily create your own variables. And to do that, you simply come to the classes and variables at the top, click on variables, and simply add in your own variable. You can see we've got a bunch of variables already set up with core framework. So I can use these and reference these, and if I make a change inside here or inside the core framework plugin itself, everywhere that uses it will be changed based upon that alteration that I've made. Hope that makes sense. So what you can do is you can simply come up here and you can say instead of putting 1.8 rem in, for example, in the size, let's change that. Let's go to our variables, core framework, and let's go and take a look at our text sizes. And we'll say we want to make this text large. Actually, let's go for something crazy like text 3XL. And now you can see, boom, we've got that massive text on there. But we're using a variable instead of an arbitrary value. So if I want to make a change to that, I can simply go into where my variables are, make that change, and everywhere will update accordingly while still keeping that same variable in use here. So it's probably a little deeper than we, we need to go, but I just want to make you aware that you can use variables inside you as opposed to just arbitrary values. And fundamentally, that's all there is to work in with the theme style at its most basic setting. However, like I say, there are more options available in 2.0 that open up more control over how things work. So let's take a quick look at some of those. Let's take a look at the contextual spacing, for example. This is a new feature that's been added in. Let's open this up. 
And this opens up a panel that allows us to, as his name would suggest, set up spacing to certain elements inside Bricks itself. This isn't kind of going to apply to everything. There are only certain elements that it actually applies to. So for example, you can see we've got the select the HTML tags. Inside here, you can select various tags, headings, paragraphs, and ordered lists, and so on. And then we can configure how they work inside these certain elements. This is incredibly useful if you're using things like the rich text element, or you're using the WordPress element, and then you're using something like Gutenberg to create content, and then you want to control the spacing of these different elements independently inside your templates. Let me show you a better example than this where we've got a page all set up. Okay, so here's our example. We've got a rich text element inserted into the page, and inside there we've got a couple of headings and ordered list and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in to remove the default margins. So you can see we've got default spacing margins as well set up on these headings, paragraphs, and so on. If we come in to the top here and we say, let's remove that for the heading, for the paragraphs, ordered lists, list items, and so on. So any spacing that's been applied to those as default from Bricks itself will now be removed. And like I say, there's, there's more nuance to this, but this is just the basics to show you how this fundamentally works. So now what we can do is we can override those values because we basically nulled them out, and we can apply them through the heading, the paragraph, the fallback, and also through these additional target elements. So for example, let's come inside here. We can put an arbitrary value in, so let's say three rem, and you see that now puts three rem spacing above each of our headings. Or we can use, like we saw earlier on, we could use the variables we have created. So we can use the space value inside here, and we can say, let's go for something, again, pretty extreme. There you go, you can see that now uses the variable value, which again, we can easily come back up to our variables and make a change, then everything references it. Let's just change that to something like medium. Paragraph, we can do the same thing. You see our paragraphs by here have closed up effectively. So we can just go and adjust the spacing on those. So again, we can come inside here, use our spacing. We'll say, go for small. And we now have our spacing set up. And you've got a fallback spacing should you want to use it. So you can see that's a nice way of doing that inside these specific elements. And for me, this is probably much more useful when you use the sort of WordPress content that element just kind of, you don't have any kind of real control without targeting that directly with CSS yourself. So your custom definitions, this now opens up an easy visual way of being able to configure things there. But if we want to add in elements that are not kind of covered here, we can add a target element inside here. We can choose the target that we want. So our unordered lists, ordered lists, and so on. So let's say we want to have the ordered list, and then you can adjust things like the spacing and so on. So margin top. So again, we can just come inside here, variables, space, you can also put the space in there. Again, we've got the bottom, left, right, and so on, each of the items. So for example, that's the ordered list. What we could do is add another target in and actually target a list item this time. So the one, two, and three. So there's your list item. And let's just say we want to put something crazy like some spacing or padding on the start of this. You see that now puts the spacing at the beginning of it. You kind of get the idea how this will work. Let's clear those out. So you notice that we've got no space at the top. This sits flush against our overall header section. So this is where we don't have the section selected. We just basically have the rich text selected. So what we can do is we can come back out of here into our theme styles, into our elements, come down into our container or our section. It's up to you how you want to work. Come into our container and inside there, let's go and put some padding inside the top and bottom. So let's link those together. Let's choose the spacing option, and let's just say we want to go for something like small spacing. So now we have space set up. So if we go and add in a new section, that will automatically have that spacing set up inside there for us, that padding inside there, because we're setting these up globally on the overall site itself. So every time a new section or container is inserted, if you've got definitions applied to it, they will automatically be applied on every single new instance that you add into your design. So this is kind of the whole global setup. Now, a couple of other things I just want to quickly go over because they are useful, but they're not massively relevant at this point in time for what I want to show you in this video. You've got things like your typography. So you can set up your global typography inside here. So your font size, your body, your all headings, and so on. So you can customize the heading sizes one by one. Generally, I would say you're much better off using variables or using a framework like Core Framework or Advanced Themas Framework because it gives you more control. And then like we've shown you, instead of using arbitrary values, you reference the variables that are set up as part of Advanced Thema, Core Framework, and so on. If you'd like me to show you how to do all this, please do let me know in the comments section down below, and I will show you how that all works. 
Now we've got these style sheets, which you can create custom style sheets in SiteJS. You can apply custom styles that will be applied to your site based upon the conditions and so on that you've configured inside the theme style settings. Probably beyond what I want to cover in this video, but if you want to have those global CSS definitions applied and you don't have options anywhere else inside your, add them here, use those conditions, have them apply to your overall site. Simple as that. And finally, you've got things like your content for your margins. So you can set up custom content margins. And finally, you've got your pop-up so you can configure how your pop-up all works. Now, the cool thing here is once you've got this all configured and set up, and it is time consuming to do, you can easily import and export these definitions between multiple sites. What I would always recommend is you create a blueprint that has all of this set up. And if you're using a framework, also has your basic value set up and your basic templates and things. And you can learn more about working with that here where I've covered how to set up a blueprint and how I've got my blueprint set up. But all you need to do if you want to is simply come up to the export option and click on that. It exports a JSON file. And then when you want to import it, you simply click the import option, select the file that you've downloaded from the other site, import it, save it, and all those definitions will be set up inside you. Working with theme styles alongside a framework speeds up your design process considerably. But like I say, if you want to learn more about that, let me know down below and I'll create more content covering it. But hopefully what this video is showing you is how easy it is to get set up with theme styles, the benefits of using a kind of catch-all default setup and then exporting that and using it on other sites to speed this side of things up. And if you want to find out more, check out the links down in the description down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.